the live streaming. Welcome to Licensing Subcommittee. Can I start off with going through the protocols? I only speak when invited to by the chair. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communications via the chair. Please ensure that your mics are muted when you are not speaking. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time frame. If referring to any written submissions, please refer to the specific page number in the agenda pack. Any new evidence can only be submitted at the discretion of the chair and the agreement of all parties. If you're having any technical difficulties, please use the chat function to alert the meeting or dial in using the details in the invitation. Please do not use the chat function for putting any formal questions to the subcommittee. Any persistent disruptive behaviour will res result in removal from the meeting. Once the application has been considered, any remaining parties will be asked to log out of the hearing. Please do so promptly so that councillors will have the opportunity to deliberate and make a decision. Each party will be notified of the decision within five working days. However, if you contact the licensing service the following day, we will be given a skeleton decision. Can I start off with the first item on the agenda? Can we elect a chair? Can I propose Councillor Smith? I second that. That's great. Thank you very much for that. And welcome everyone to this uh, licensing subcommittee A. I always show this on the agenda because it's a kind of public facing meeting that's being recorded. Um, 8th of February, 7 o'clock, 2024. Uh, there it is. Um, you might have this online, you might have a hard copy. The agenda is on the inside sleeve. Uh, you can see it just there. Um, and uh, that's where we are. So just to start, we'll just go around and make some introductions uh, very quickly. Um, so I'm Councillor Smith, uh, Councillor Stoke Newington Warden, also Chair of Licensing. Nice to see you all. Um, Councillor Lufkin. I'm Councillor Richard Lufkin, Vice Chair of Licensing and uh, Councillor for the Chacoa Award. Thank you. Councillor Root. I'm Councillor Penny Root and I represent Victoria Ward. Fantastic. So you can see there you've got three members on this tonight. Um, officers, we'll do next. So Suba. Good evening, everybody. I'm Suba Shri Ramna, Principal Licensing Officer, and I will be presenting the report. Thank you very much. Amanda. Hello, good evening. My name is Amanda North from Legal Services. I'm supporting members this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. And Rabia, you've already heard from uh, our Governance Officer. Do you want to say hello, Rabia? Again. Oh, hello. I'm Rabia from the Governance <laughs> Officer. Thank you, Rabia. Um, and we've got Mr. Stewart on the call uh, from the Licensing Authority just observing today. Is that right, David? That's correct. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, and now on to other people on the call. Um, all your names are up here, so I, I, I presume you're okay with me referring to your name um, that's on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the screen there, yeah? Is that okay? Yes. Fantastic. Great. So I've got Michelle. Bob. And Rob. And Rob. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, and you're here as, an, as another person, yeah? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, and then I've got Andrew. Yeah, my, my wife Julie also will speak separately. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I can see Keith there. Is it Keith Davies and uh, Louise Davies? Uh, Keith is here, yes. Okay. Welcome, Keith. And uh, Richard. Is that Richard yes, that's Dudley? Right. Richard Dudley. Um, one of the residents, uh, owners of a flat in the uh, Cosmopolitan House. Yep. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so I think we've done our introductions. If I haven't, then please let me know, anybody. Okay, that's good. Oh, there's another David I can see, but that, I think um, David on the screen there. Uh, it's, um, yes, it's Alan Thomas for the applicant, and I'm here with David, who's the general manager of the... Energy. You're quite a long way away from the... From the um, it's hard to see you. Can you. Is there any way we could see you can get a bit closer to the? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Chair? Yeah, is I can hear you. I can't really they're, see they're you very in a well. Room, unfortunately, like a boardroom, unfortunately, so you won't be able to see them close up. Okay. Oh well, at least we can hear you. But it'd be nice yeah. to see you as well. But um, okay. Uh, so we've done our introductions, um, and we shall go through the agenda now. Uh, so agenda item one is selection of chair. We've done that. 
agenda item two, apologies for absence. We have an apology tonight from Councillor Moema, who can't make this, and she has been substituted by Councillor Root. So thank you very much, Root, for, um, Councillor Root, for giving us your time tonight. Um, agenda item three, declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest to declare from members? No? Councillor Root? Nothing from me. Thank you. Um, agenda item four, minutes of previous meeting. Um, minutes are of the meeting are contained within the supplementary pack. Um, um, can we approve those, please? Yes, I, 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 um, the meeting for the Abbey Park Cemetery hearing, I've read them, they're a true record. Thanks. Thank you very much. That's great. And likewise, um, agenda item five is the hearing procedure. So just going to kind of run through the hearing procedure very quickly. Um, works in steps. So step one is election of chair. Step two, the principal licensing officer, Amanda. Sorry, Chair. Um, there was a second set of minutes, I believe, in the pack. If you could just, for the record, say that you approve the, because you actually did approve them, um, the okay. um, licensing subcommittee minutes for the 7th of December. I think that's in the supplementary pack as well. You'll okay, see that's what the, Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. So, if you could just say it for the record that that's been approved as well. Thank you. Okay, so we've got minutes for the 25th of September, they're approved, and for the 7th of December. Yes, uh, 23 uh, and they are an accurate record of those proceedings thank you very much um okay so where were we uh where were we <laughs> so after after the minutes the next is declarations of interest oh we we're doing the step we're doing the steps now aren't we that's right yeah. okay so let me start again with those step one election of chair we've done that step two um the licensee officer will outline the report that'll be Subi you'll hear from um this is over five minutes Step three, the applicant will uh, present their case in support of their application. Again, that is five minutes. Um, there are no responsible authorities this evening, um, but there are other persons which, who we've, they've introduced themselves this evening. Um, and again, you will get five minutes each to speak. We did speak about three minutes, but as I'll explain in a minute, um, we're going to kind of look at these as one application, and I'll explain why in, in a little while. Um, step five, other persons, that's you. Step six, we will move into a discussion phase over 15 minutes. Step seven, closing remarks. Um, step eight, any point of final clarification. And then step nine, we will ask everyone to leave and we will go on to consider the case. Okay, so on to that point that I made before. Um, it looks like there's two applications here, but actually, um, and in the pack as well, you've got two, what appear to be two licenses for two separate venues. We're going to disregard the one for agenda item seven, which is for, I mean, I mean the license because it doesn't have one because the, the one license, there's one license for the whole building, essentially. So we are referring to um, the one at agenda item six, and that would be on pages, let me just find the page, 88 and 89 of the physical pack. Have you got that? Can, can you see that, folks? Do you, what are you looking at? Are you looking at an online version of the agenda or are you looking at the physical one? It's likely to be online, Chair. Online. Yeah. Can anyone think, help me with the numbers for that for online? It's an existing license yeah. that's, that you're referring to. And you're only saying that the existing license in the first application is the one that we're going to rely on as the existing license. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we will be referring to elements because we can see clearly that there are there's, there's a bit of a material difference between them. The biggest material difference that I can see is um, for the Ennismore Hotel one is that is about the bedrooms. Essentially, that's how it really differs. I mean, the 24 hour alcohol mm -hmm. service and bedrooms. That's the material, the big material difference there. Um, generally it's all it's all pretty pretty similar so we'll just take it all in one hit and that's why you've got your five minutes rather than three yeah um andrew you've got your hand up yeah um yeah and can i speak for i've, I've got a separate objection in um i think the main point here is that we the, the residents are aware of a complete change of use that is planned for the hotel yeah that was mentioned in one of your representations yeah, and have... now strong evidence to that effect 
So what is going on is they are, I think we can get more details, is they want to start running a club and a nightclub, a beach club and a nightclub. So that I think is why they've divided it into two. So I think that's a very material fact. I know people are shaking their heads, but you, I, I can show you the evidence. Um, and I think that's material when we look at this publication. We did talk about this before um, with our licensing officer, Mr. Chewett, about the change of use, and there isn't a change of use as far as he's concerned. Um, Amanda, do you want to come in on this point? Yes, just want to clarify, Chair, that um, the, the, the two, the building, it will be separate, um, separated by two separate tenants. One part of it will remain as a hotel in the normal way and operate in that way. And the second, the other part, uh, including the rooftop, will be a um, will be a form of a members club. So um, so that part will be a members club uh, used um, for that purpose. So that's why we're saying that generally the whole building will operate very on a very similar license for both but there will just be that subtle difference that's the only sorry, thing the, and just to say that current, everyone was, sorry I'm, I'm sorry but what's the current use class for the building if it's only c is it c two or four for a hotel just, just to say in terms of the planning use that this is the licensing subcommittee so we can only if, if for example there was any planning issues at all all we can do is ask the applicant, uh, advise them to go to the planning department and rectify their planning issues if there is any. But at the present time, we're saying there aren't any change of use issues. But when we're hoping that the applicant will clarify this in their presentation. So I know it's a bit frustrating listening to all of these bits and pieces, but because we've everyone has an opportunity to speak shortly, um, the applicant will start first and clarify all of the case and then you can explain your representations as, as we go along. So I do apologize, but just to say that licensing and planning are separate regimes. Yes, we can, um, in accordance with policy LP6, um, mm. is, um, that we can consider planning issues, um, but we, we can't sort of make a decision to affect the planning, um, planning department. We can't tell them what to do. They can only take a recommendation to the applicant to go and resolve their planning issues, but we can't. So they would have to go to planning committee to resolve that if there, if there is an issue. Thank you. Thank you. I completely understand. However, I don't think you should assume the use position subject to what the applicants are going to say. OK, well, well we, can go, we can go through all that again, um, Julie, yeah. when you when you get your time to, to, to represent yourself there. Um, OK, so shall we start? Everyone happy? Just nod. Or shake your head so I can see. Brilliant. Excellent. Okay, so we'll carry on. That's good. Um, okay, so I would like to invite the Principal Licensing Officer, please, uh, Suba, to outline the report. Thank you, Suba. Thank you, Chair. So as we as you mentioned earlier, so there's a current existing premises license for Mondrian Hotel, Fortify Curtain Road. The applicant has split the premises license and so has submit, sorry, has split the premises and submitted two premises license applications. One for the private club and rooftop level minus three part of level minus two part of ground floor and roof terrace and the second application for the level minus part of level minus two level minus one part of the ground floor and first floor to the fifth floor hotel bedrooms um, the application is seeking for the permission for place from 7 to 2 a.m sunday to thursday and from 7 to 3 a.m on, uh, and from 7 to 3 a.m. on Friday and Saturday, and for other regulated entertainment activities, and to authorize the supply of alcohol for consumption on the premises from 7 to 3 a.m. Monday to Sunday, and for 24 hours for hotel bedrooms only for the first to the fifth floor, and for the late night refreshment is from 23 to 3 a.m. Monday to Sunday, as stated within the report. So we have representation from other persons which has been uh, um, so we have pending representation from other persons. We have received additional information from the applicant and other persons B1 and B4. And all these documents have been circulated. And I have nothing else to add. Thank you, Chair. Great. So just to kind of get it straight in everyone's head, th this application essentially is what they've currently got. The roof is essentially it shuts at midnight. Yeah. That's, that's what you're looking at here. 
the indoor sales of alcohol is, to, uh, is until three, but the roof stops at 12 o'clock. And you can see that from the uh, submission that was made, the additional information that was sent through by the applicant. And it's also, if you look at the license in there as well, I mean, the hours on that license, if you look in your pack, you will see the hours are like that. So that's what we're kind of looking at here. Um, Amanda? So can we um, maybe just uh, clap, um, check with the other persons? Have they seen the additional information from the applicant? Yeah. Have you yeah. seen the additional information? He was, it was a rebuttal against some of the, uh, the views that were expressed have you seen have you seen that it was a little little table of super have you circulated that to all the um, yes we circulated and we received response from other persons in regarding what those day did you circulate it can you just say uh, when, when was that yeah can, I can't put it closer to the camera uh julie yeah i can't hear you she's on, I can't mute. Hear you're she's on mute. mute she's on mute that's why she's on mute you I think to... you're referring to the letter of the 31st of January from the Mondrian to... Yeah, is Quals... it like a table? Is, is it set out on a table? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. yeah we've okay. seen that. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Um, right. So we'll move on to other persons now because we do not have any other representation for other responsible authorities like the police or the local authority, the licensing team, health, that kind of thing. Um, so, so, sorry to interrupt, uh, the applicant next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get through this swiftly um sorry about that um so yeah i'd like to invite the applicant now please to make your representation you've got five minutes thank you thank you councillor smith well they're, they're swiftly and they're swiftly um, but I will <laughs> um there, there is no change of use here there was one tenant there are now two tenants um david to my right um is from ennismore and you go on the other side is the is the club operator We've got one license, we're splitting into two. The terms of the relevant activities and the conditions have just been lifted from that one license and transposed into the two different licenses and the two different uh, occupations, uh, the two different uh, uh, demises. Chair, I, I'm, I'm going to be brief because the uh, David, who's been the general manager uh, here for some time, and has told me what complaints there have been under his uh, tenure. So th there was an issue about smoking in the wrong place that has been addressed. There was some noise from an air handling unit that has been addressed. There was a lorry associated with an event at the hotel, but not, it was driving around Hackney blaring music. We had an event here. It wasn't our lorry and it was just driving around. Um, so it, it was associated with the event, but it wasn't part of the event. We've been we've been operating like this with the two um, uh, the two distinct entities since mid December, either under temporary event notices or under the existing license. And as I've said, and I won't repeat it again, it is simply to divide the one license into two, which makes it better in terms of enforceability, because you know who to enforce against. And B, in terms of transparency, so if there are any complaints about the rooftop, for example, which is my friend Hugo's demise over here, it can be directed directly to Hugo, and anything to do with the hotel can be directed to, to, to David. So in terms of those concerns, as you'll have seen from our letter, we are continually monitoring the situation in relation to customer and staff smoking. You've seen a copy of the staff smoking policy, and we've been asked to move the smoking area, but I'm afraid that's just not possible for security reasons. Um, chairs, you've already covered off. The rooftop is not being changed. It can't be used um, for licensable activities after midnight and can't be accessed at all by customers after half past midnight. So the only other um, uh, complaints, uh, so to speak, with reference to somebody threatening to slap somebody well um that obviously wasn't um uh, a member of staff it may have been a customer but it wasn't us uh there was evidence of a single wine glass on the street um not one of our glasses we know what our glasses look like and i've dealt with the issue of the uh, event track so chair i'm not sure i'm even going to take my five minutes it's it's very simple we've got one we want two it's better for enforceability it's better for transparency um I noticed in the report back there was some reference to conditions being missing. 
there shouldn't be. They we we were great pains to make sure the relevant conditions were transposed onto the onto the new applications and therefore the new licenses. Um, Chair, we're happy to deal with any questions that you may have. Yeah. So at this point, members, uh, just uh, any point of clarification you would like to make at this stage at all, uh, Councillor Lufkin. Okay, so just to be absolutely sure, there's no, you're not applying for any changes of any conditions that currently apply to the whole premises. One million percent correct. Uh, other than the ones that would not affect, so the hotel ones, the hotel bedroom conditions will only affect the part of the building which has hotel bedrooms in. Yes, yes. We, we license, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Root, do you have any point of clarification? No, I'm pretty clear at the moment, thanks. Great. I have one uh, point to make about uh, condition 27, the rooftop uh, to be used between 7 to midnight, and then 28 says no person shall have access to the roof after 12.30. Uh, I'm just trying to understand both those conditions. Um, it's not to be used after 12, but yet no access after 12.30. So I just want you to explain the difference in those two. Maybe you should just round it up to 12. It's the... Um the rooftop cannot be used for licensable activities, so you can't sell alcohol up there or music after 12, but effectively we've got a half an hour drinking up time built in. It gives us time to just get everyone off the roof. Okay, so that's that's what that is. That's good. Thank you very much. Um, Michelle and Keith, I can see your hands are up. Um, your your time is coming. Um, if you do, do, do you care to wait or do you want to ask a question now, which is pertinent? Um, it, it's, it's it's just an answer to the to, to the answer on on the um, on the letter that they said about that the uh, person being threatened to to be slapped. Yes, that was me, but that person was with a member of their staff, which they didn't actually say in that letter. So I I just think it's a bit deceiving to say uh, that it wasn't a member of staff because that person who threatened it was a member of staff with their friend. So it was a member of the staff at the hotel, but and that's making it a tiny bit sort of deceiving but anyway that's just i wanted to add that 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 wasn't the intention it has been investigated this end it's very difficult to uh, sort of no, but you didn't it. say that in the in, in the, fine yeah and the, um, the yeah. In hasn't been addressed but i can talk about that i wasn't yeah. going to talk about it but as it's been brought up i can talk about it in my five minutes okay michelle and keith do you have a pertinent question I dispute the statement conditions haven't been changed I'll cover that later. They're yeah. being considerably changed. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so and now we can move into other persons and let's start with Keith. But well, apologize for reading out my submission, but I wanted to ensure I covered everything clearly. The application is in the name of Mondrian Hotel Private Club and Rooftop. We now find that the premises will be operated by Blue Marlin. Ibiza organization, which has a business model and brand image very different to how the premises are currently operating and how you'd expect a hotel and club to operate. I'll return to this later. Because this was hidden from us, we've had no opportunity to object to the problems of public nuisance arising from this different business model. Whilst this is not illegal, it is a devious way of introducing a possibly disruptive entertainment venue without proper oversight. In considering the license application, may I suggest that it's beholden on the committee to consider the nature, nature of the applicant, or in this case, the operator. Therefore, I would ask the committee to consider what could have been the purpose in disguising the actual company operating the license. Therefore, I request the whole application is rejected and either Mondrian Hotel resubmitted, making it clear who the operator is, or Blue Marlin be required to submit the application in their own name. This is why I'm concerned. Nicola Reed, head of hotels at the Parent Group Ruben Brothers, carries on her LinkedIn page the quote from the Evening Standard, Ibiza's hedonistic club, Blue Marlin, to launch new site in Shoreditch. So what is this hedonistic club that she's so proud of? The pre-launch press releases have led to the following reviews in various magazines. 
Londoners will have the chance to soak up its party vibes year round. Guests can work, exercise and dine during the day and party from evening time. The rooftop sky lounge will be the jewel in the crown of Blue Marlin Ibiza for London, boasting views over the city, hosting a range of events, launch parties, DJ sets. Place to work and dine by day becoming a late night party venue, a nod to Ibiza's famous nightlife. A taste of Ibiza lifestyle right here in London. And finally, from time out, there'll be bags of events, DJ sets, and live music to christen the terrace. But I want to concentrate on a Blue Marlins operation in the United Arab Emirates to Abu Dhabi, not a place you'd expect to find a party club. Quote, Abu Dhabi is known more for family-friendly activities than it is for parties. Blue Marlin, however, is the exception. Blue Marlin attracts a colorful cast of characters whose ambitions include dancing and drinking until sunrise. The staff, staff here love to join the party. They're good at creating a fun atmosphere, even when the crowd seems sluggish. May I therefore submit that the Blue Marlin IB for business plan and model is to create in the evening a brand image of a vibrant, almost certainly noisy venue reminiscent of the memories many of their clients have had of parties in Ibiza. Whilst everyone enjoys a party, and I don't want to disparage that, and it is not my intention to spoil their business model, however, I am, as are the other residents, turning to the members of this committee to protect the residents of the area from the public nuisance that these activities could cause, particularly from the rooftop terrace. David Lockhart, the general manager, stated in his letter, in response to our objections, there are no changes to the conditions that control them. That is not true. The existing license shows the supply of alcohol on the roof terrace to be from nine o'clock to zero zero in a clear separate section showing all days of the week. Yeah. Um, on page 14 of the Mondrian Hotel application, the roof tennis included in the general hours with a brief note, roof tennis, Monday to Sunday, nine o'clock midnight. However, I cannot see this brief note in any further document, seems to have got lost. So I'd accept that the rooftop terrace be dealt in a separate section, clearly stating nine o'clock to zero zero, as in the existing license. Condition 38 of the existing license states, the outside area of the rooftop would be close to the public after 11 o'clock, close to the public after 11 o'clock, save for those wishing to smoke. Condition 39 states the maximum number of persons permitted to smoke on the rooftop terrace after 11 o'clock shall be no more than five at a time. Without these conditions, the applications would allow 125 people to be on the rooftop until midnight, and although there would be no music, they can make a huge amount of noise, which at nice would travel and be very extremely dis uh, disturbing. I've spoken to my existing objection. However, had I known that the business plan of the club was to create an Ibiza, and I quote, we all know what Ibiza is all about, party atmosphere. I would have asked the committee to consider many other matters, including controls on the behaviour of people leaving the club in the early hours of the morning. I would have asked the, uh, the committee to consider whether they should add conditions requiring the club to supervise people in the surrounding streets. Conditions which were included in the original licence granted to Gainsford following two intensive meetings in December 2015 and February 2016. Your committee were brilliant. We had two very, very intense meetings then. As I said, I feel the application should be rejected. However, if the committee feels it cannot do that, then please at least apply the two conditions above and the clear statement of ours for the terrace. Finally, 
I request that all conditions on the main license be applied to all tenants applied for. It's no good having the tenant if they don't have the conditions. So that's it. I think the operators of the club have been withheld from us. It was only by accident we found out. It's a very, very different organisation to that presented by the applicant. It's an Ibiza party, party club. Thank you very much for your attention. I step down now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, that was fantastic. Very clear. Um, I just wanted to chip in here to officers for a second. Suba, um, I'm looking at, obviously there's, there's, there's a bit of confusion here, although it's, it's sort of one kind of application. Um, I've got two sets of conditions in the pack. Uh, one set of conditions that pays 20 um, of my pack, my physical pack, and then for agenda item seven, there's another set of conditions which sort of seem to include some other elements. Um, so which which one are we referring to for the whole building? Are we referring to the ones at agenda item six or the ones at agenda item seven? Which ones are we referring to? The things are that because the thing is the application has been split for different flows. That's why the condition wise, the references will be a little bit varied. So it's basically the item six is the reference only for the rooftop and the club kind of things. And for the item seven is for the uh, other flows, the bedrooms as such. So in that way, you will see the difference with the conditions. Okay, so I would like to ask the applicant then, um, uh, just about Keith's suggestion of conditions, the omission of condition 38 and 39 off license 105685 um i don't believe we've omitted them um chair can you, can you just can you just find them then and just point them out to us a bit later i i, I would i will do my best the there is an inside and an outside area of the reef terrace and the the outside area as you'll see on the existing 38 is closed to the public um after 11 o'clock say for smokers and then 39 limits to smokers so there is an inside the reason for the misunderstanding is that there's a an inside area which is licensed until midnight or half past midnight and then there's an outside area which is licensed until uh which can be used um until 11 except for smokers who are allowed to uh, go out until half past midnight okay okay uh, well, I, will, I will try to find those in the um that would be good in, just to uh, find those just so we can reassure uh keith on those keith yeah, you got your yeah, hand up can i just give some uh reassurance to to keith on, on that point if i may chair um i think i dealt with it in my in fact I, we didn't deal with it in the letter because keith's um further representation came, came in later um we we haven't tried to hide anything it was quite clear on the face of the application at page that you'll see at page 26 of the reports back pack that we were applying for a nightclub it was a nightclub before and then is more and it's a nightclub now under blue marlin and the application makes it absolutely clear that we were applying for a nightclub there's been there's no, been no um deception um here in in the slightest yeah that's under the description isn't it of the business Hmm. Isn't that right? Say again, Chair. It, it, that comes under the description of yes. the type of business yes. you want to run, yeah, in the, yes. applica yes. in the application form, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. May, yeah. I have, may I rebut, please? Yeah, go ahead, Keith. I'm fully aware it's a nightclub. It's been operating very well. The point about the business model of uh, Marlin, uh, Blue Marlin Ibiza is that it is very, very much a party club. That is the difference. Had we known that uh, when that it was this type of business model, I would have been more concerned. It's up, been operating as a, a nightclub, as you say, quite rightly for a time. Blue Marlin Ibiza has a particular business model, and we should have been made aware of who the operator was. Okay, thank you for that. I can see uh, Michelle and Andrew, you've got your hands up, but it is your chance to now speak, um, uh, unless you want to chip in quickly on this particular yeah. point. 
the, the nightclub is actually yes we're aware it's a nightclub but it, the nightclub is in the basement it's not been on the roof the, terrace. the nightclub is not on the roof the on roof the, terrace is been uh, a restaurant it's a restaurant it used to be a restaurant laurels um uh, on the rooftop Indeed. But the nightclub is the basement. Basement. So they're saying they're there. operating it as a nightclub on the rest, but it's not. Can, can I just add one point here? It yep. was never a nightclub on the um, basement until I think December of this year. Prior to that, there was only ever a restaurant. So it has never, ever at any stage until December of this year, the bottom turned into a nightclub. This is entirely new. When posters, um, they were, I've submitted them in my evidence, you can see them started appearing in December of, of this year. There is no um, beach club on the roof yet. However, we know that's entirely their intention from the press reports. Okay. Um, do you want to come back on that? Thank, thank you. I have been taking instructions as well whilst you've been talking. Um, there, is no, there is no change in the use or change in the conditions. The, the nightclub is in the basement. The, the roof terrace is, is, a, is a restaurant and bar. It's always is, always has been, and always will be. We've got no intention to run um, a beach club, whatever, whatever that might be. We simply will comply with the same conditions as on the existing license. Yeah, but you've got a swimming pool up on the roof, don't you? Um, I haven't been up there myself. I'm in the hotel, but well, that's um, what it says on. That's what it says in the plan. Yeah. But yes, yes, we've got a pool. Yes, um, but you do realise that um, what's that house called next next to you? Uh, Soho House. So they say it again. Is it Soho House? No, 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 no. Shoreditch. No, Shoreditch. the name of the um, of the building close close by. What's it called? I really, I did write it down somewhere. Oh, Cos Cosmopolitan House. Cosmopolitan House. You've got a terrace as well, haven't you, on the roof? Yeah. We did. Yeah. So you'll be able to yeah, see if they're having beach parties on there, yeah? <laughs> we hope not. Okay. Keith, do you have a, a little point you want to make? I can see Castle yeah. Roots hands up as well. Just a quote from the, the reviews and that have gone up. The rooftop sky lounge will be the jewel in the crown of the blue mile in Ibiza, London, boasting yeah. views over the city hosting a range of events, launch parties, and DJ sets. I'm afraid the gentleman representing the, rep the um, applicants is not selling it as it intends to be. It's, it's very much about the rooftop being party time. I'm sorry. But can, can you just, can you, can, David, can you just address this? Because we're going around in circles. Is this completely false and made up and we're just dreaming it? Oh, yeah. And are you willing to put conditions that you will never, um, well, I'll come back to my point about music in a minute, you won't operate a beach club on the roof? I, I, don't, I don't know what a beach club is, quite frankly. We just want the same conditions on the existing licence, nothing more, nothing less. Whatever, we're put, whatever the licence allows us to do at the moment, that's what we want and that's what we will comply with. But you can hear you can hear Keith's concern, can't you, about um, the material that's being produced to suggest that actually, whatever this beach club is, it will be a, a part of the business model. And what Keith's saying, and what the others are saying, if you are saying that that's not going to happen, then you should be happy to have a condition to say you cannot do that. But, but chair, what, what what Keith read out was um, it said um, sky lounge with great views across the city. No, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. He didn't. He didn't actually. I, I, I do remember Keith. Just say it again. I read the rooftop sky lounge will be jewel in the crown, boasting views of the city and hosting a range of events, launch parties, and DJ sets. I'm sorry. Please. Which is exactly. Which is exactly. Please, will you accept conditions? that the roof terrace will not cause a disturbance in any way to the surrounding residents. But Chair, I mean, I think we're, I think we're talking about three, di three different things here. We, we've got an existing license. We will comply with the terms and conditions of the license we had in the same way that Ennismore did when they had, had, that, had that part of it. 
we've been operating in this way since December and we haven't had any problems, we haven't had any complaints. If there are complaints going forward in relation to any way that we operate, there is a separate process for that, which the chair you'll be very familiar with called the, re the review process. But the, the license as it is and the conditions as it is, we will continue to comply with, including um, 38 and 39. So just just to be clear, you so you've been having DJ sets on the roof then up till midnight, have you? We've been we've been operating under Blue Marlin since uh, midnight. I don't know if we've been having DJ sets or anything. No. no. Um, so what kind of events? I was cast the route. I can see um, that you're waiting there. Um, do, you, do you want to come in now, actually? Sure. Um, I suppose I was. I can see where Keith's coming from and why he's alarmed because that publicity material does kind of imply um, dancing all night and what have you on the rooftop. Um, but um, given that there's nobody allowed outside on the rooftop after a certain time and that doors have to be closed and that in any case the rooftop has to shut at midnight, that seems to me to pretty much guarantee that it can't become a club as such because my experience of clubs is that they tend to be after midnight. Um, so I think to some extent that may provide some reassurance. And I, I was just going to ask Keith and indeed the other residents, because I noticed from the photographs that was, that was submitted that at least one of the events um, organized by the Ibiza gang um, took place on the 14th of December, um, which happens to be my birthday as well, but I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just wondered if if there was if they'd noted anything different that night. You know, if there was any kind of particular difference that uh, that anybody had clocked to Can do I with just, that event. Yeah, on the, on that point, um, I can't speak to that event but in my materials, and I don't know know if this comes out of my five five minutes. But on the 29th of September, I had to submit and lose a noise pollution complaint to Hackney Council, it's in the materials, page 79. Um, all day long, there was loud, thumping music from that hotel. Um, it was upset me and my son. Um, they wouldn't turn it down. I was just told there was an event and they wouldn't stop it. Um, I reported it to Hackney Council on the day. So this is the type of thing they completely intend to do. Be all day beach club, noisy music, thumping from the roof. If that happens, it'd be completely unacceptable. So, and the fact that they're saying they want to do this at night, I, I think their existing license should actually, um, for all music, be completely stopped for on the roof. Forget any of this 11 o'clock, 3 o'clock nonsense. Any um, noise in the daytime is also completely unacceptable. There's more of us from working from home, and I've got a 14 year old kid to look after. Yeah. Mr. Thomas, just to, to bring you in on this one, um, in terms of that, that noise complaint on the 29th of September, um, 11 a.m., it started, um, and it went on to 4.35. In one of your conditions, um, I'll look at the last one in terms of the numbers, but there's a condition around sound, a sound limiter. Um, can we ask you why the sound limiter didn't work? Bass frequencies, as you know, are really troubling for people. They actually cause people quite a lot of anxiety. Um, and that's a physical phenomenon. Um, it's a physical, biological phenomenon. Um, why didn't the, the noise limiter work on that occasion, please? Chair, I, I don't think we can say that it wasn't working on that day. I've just asked, David's here, he's the general manager of the hotel, and this was before the Blue Marlin days. They only came on board in December. So it would have been, sorry to pass the buck to David, but it would have been under his watch then. We Can you remember what might have been going on on the 29th of September? Does that ring any bells? I'm afraid it doesn't actually ring any bells to me. Um, it, as it's a day event, is that was that what the, the complaint was? I think it was a day event, yeah. AM. It, it may have been a press release with um, Fashion Week, but I'm unsure as to what was happening out there. Yeah. I mean, you are aware. I mean, you have. You need to be aware, um, partic you know, particularly uh, late, late at night, 
the bass frequencies, and I know it's all part of the, the kind of clubby feel, um, but let's please do that inside. If you want to pump the bass up, do it inside, not on the roof, um, I would say. Okay, look, um, I want to take uh, Richard next. Um, Richard, you've been extremely patient, um, so if you'd like to come in, well, please. I know Julie and Andrew have some very specific things they'd like to go through, as probably Ron and Michelle do, and I just wanted to do a bit of a wrap-up of all the residents' concerns towards the end, um, if that's okay, Councillor. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Okay, well, let's let's take Andrew and Julie then. Okay, um, I'll just whip through. Um, on the planning point, just to say I'm definitely going to raise this with planning enforcement and Hackney planning. As, mm -hmm. as Amanda rightly said, it's a planning issue. I don't think we can take the applicant's words that there's been no change of use when they've clearly just admitted that Blue Marlin became involved in December this year. There's a clear change of use from hotel use to nightclub use. Um, but anyway, that's a matter for Hackney planning. Just to say, we are not against hotels and bars and restaurants per se. We love living in Shoreditch. It's the reason why we live here. There is an excellent hotel round the corner. It's called the Nobu Hotel. We've never had any issues, problems with them. Noise, they keep the place clean. No problems such as my other neighbours have had. So, you know, we're not just doing this for the sake of it. It's causing us real concern. Um, the roof noise, I've, I've told you about that. My son was upset. I was upset. We're working from home. We cannot have that on a daily basis, either during the night or the day. So I would say all music emanating from the roof should be completely banned unless they've got those sound protectors in, in place. And as far as I can see, if you want to run a beach club around the pool, um, you're going to have to have some pretty strong sound protectors. Um, what else? The whole way, that I have never heard the name Blue Marlin until I started Googling after you represented in your letter that I spoke about of the 31st of January, you said that, um, so Mr. Manager, sorry, I forgot your name, David, you said the new tenant is a, quote, reputable food and beverage operator with international experience. Now, a granted international experience, forgot to mention Ibiza, Food and beverage, you've got pictures of Pete Tong and other famous DJs plastering the place. You've also got um, velvet ropes outside. Um, it's you know, You've admitted by your own admission, you've got a nightclub in the basement now, and we know that you want to transfer to that to the roof also. So I'm just completely not buying any of the stuff that there's been no change of, of, of any activity. There clearly has. You're just trying to shoehorn your own activities into what you had on day one. We didn't have a problem with what, the way the Curtain Hotel, as it then was, was running. There are people in there quietly on their laptops um, working away, but now it's turned into nightclubs and beach clubs. That's just um, not right. Um, so my submission would be that um, the new, entirely new application is... is, is um, not granted on the basis that the committee hasn't had full disclosure of any type as to the true facts, plus the planning situation is not clear. I'll raise that myself with Hackney um, Council. Um, and furthermore, I think the existing licence should definitely be amended to um, stop all open air music um, on the roof unless the sound um, protectors work. Um, what else? Also, it might be worth Hackney doing a little site visit themselves to actually see with their own eyes what's going on. I've, I've, I've submitted you, you know, pictures and stuff, but um, it's clear that there's something going on in there. I don't particularly want to go in there. Um, and I think it would be quite um, dangerous for this to proceed on the basis that there's only going to be more complaints. Um, we're going to have to get planning involved and potentially, you know, the police. Because I was in two minds that day when I heard all the thumping about calling the police. And, I, I, you know, I didn't do that because I don't want to waste their time. But in future, if I have to, I, I will. Um, that's it for me. 
Okay, can I just turn back to that? Mine's much shorter. Um, yep. but I've, I've lived around here for in Shoreditch for nearly 30 years. I've lived in this particular premises for four, four years now. Um, I used to live quite close on Great Eastern Street. So I've seen the area change a lot. Some of us, I don't know if any of the uh, David um, representing the applicants lives around here um, or spent any time around here in the evening. I can tell you it's changed a lot and unfortunately not generally for the better. I've enjoyed living around here. We've used, been to nearly all the places more than once but the problem we have is that it's the pollution it's the noise pollution it's the um the vomit the urine the broken bottles the food that will come with this it will get worse it's already bad it will get worse yeah the noise will get worse it's the cars it's the screaming and shouting at 3 a.m or whatever time it is it will get worse we have a right to quiet enjoyment we were here first i've been living here for 30 years i know some of my uh, neighbors have been probably longer we were here first yeah it's not a case of not in my backyard we it's already a residential area people live around here kids live around here people work around here from home now so go back to the point it will get worse you're making it worse if you accept this that's all i've got thank you very much um okay uh michelle Hi, yes, thank you. Uh, Rob, Rob and I have got our own five minutes. Yep. Okay. So uh, the letter from the hotel um, said the applicants are simply to divide the existing license into two on the same terms. The new tenant is a reputable food um, and beverage operator with international experience. The hours activities condition remain the same to the relevant areas the applications to seek to mirror the existing premises license and the hours activities permitted under the existing license coupled with the proposed license conditions and reassurance from david lockhart at the Mondrian, it would appear there is no cause for concern for residents we were being assured that said after embarking on research investigation because it was not obvious we have uncovered the truth showing the reassurance from the hotel is deceitful the reputable new tenant is as we know blue marlin ibiza and indeed it is a reputable company nobody's asking that however their successful operating model the purpose is completely different from the previous Laurel's rooftop restaurant, which had low level ambient music. There was no partying on the rooftop. It wasn't a problem. So Blue Marley and Ibiza, I won't go through it all again. Um, Keith has mentioned, it's been mentioned already that uh, it's a luxury Ibiza beach club. Um, it's been uh, advertised as um, looking for a young audience. Membership is specifically offered at a preferential rate for under 30s. Um, the world's biggest DJs. And it's um, in light of this res revelation, our concern is, my concern particularly is, that whilst the licence is the same, the Blue Marlin can apply for up to 15 tens licenses a year, which appears to be the back door in order to then host renowned DJ artists and their party soul rooftop. That is the way they can get through it. So especially more so in the summer. And 15 tens a year, having that racket, is unacceptable. We have um, experienced uh, the rooftop party that um, uh, Julie was talking about last year, and the noise was horrendous. There was no escape in it. We could hear it with the windows closed, the beat, the bass, and God forbid, if we'd have gone onto the terrace, it, it is impossible to be outside. It was an absolute nightmare. It's just absolutely saturated the area um it's uh insufferable in, inescapable and it's detrimental to our mental health it really because if this blue marlin um 
gets 10 licenses and on the roof, they'll be partying. But you, you've just got to look online. You can see their plans. You can see their promotion for uh, Blue Ibiza London. This is what they're going to do. The license application appears to be underhanded. And we believe also that noise pollution has not made a representation and should be aware of the true purpose of Blue Marlin Ibiza and involved in this license as the purpose of the rooftop has changed. Any noise coming from a licensed venue should not cause a statutory or public nuisance. The rule is up for some interpretation, but it's fairly easy to follow a common sense approach. The noise should not interfere significantly with any individual's right to enjoy their home life. And this is what we are at risk of. So it's, it's completely disingenuous. Great, that's four and a half minutes. Um, Rob, do you want to come in with 30 seconds? Yes, yeah, uh, for my five minutes. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, no, you, 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 you two get five minutes in total. <laughs> no, no, we applied. Yeah, you do. No. You do. We took five minutes each. Each. Yeah. We asked specifically the, the licensing to register as two separate objections. Uh, well, on my uh, form, your down is one. Well, that's incorrect. Yeah. We've got an email got where an we email. requested. Okay, for the sake of, I'll, I'll give you two and a half minutes. Off you go. No, I've got just. Do. I would specifically like to object on the grounds of preventing a public nuisance to the new license application for a rooftop terrace operated by Blue Marlin. Although the license application in writing reads the same, it's a substantially different in the way it is going to be operated from when the license was originally granted when the hotel first opened. The original owner gave assurances and conditions were added that only piped music with a noise limiter would be played on the inside roof terrace in a restaurant setting. I request that all con existing conditions are carried across from the original license, especially condition 30, 39, now condition 35 on the new application. This refers to sound limited equipment set so that no sound from the rooftop should be heard in any residential area around the hotel. This condition should also be included on any 10 licensing applications to be held on the open air and indoor terrace. The new proposed license and 10 licenses without current existing conditions will permit an open air club with amplified sounds all day until 10 p.m. with DJs and such alike continuing with the glass roof closed until 3 a.m., which is the licenses too. It is unacceptable in a residential area. No acoustic measurements have been taken or submitted on how this noise pollution will affect residents living in the surrounding area. This is unacceptable. And I note Blue Marlin, who proposed to run this club, are treating the application in their literature as it is something in an isolated open air nightclub with no residential. Clearly it's not. We have encountered daytime noise in the past from the roof terrace over the years. The, when the hotel held the bar. So residents of Cosmo and Cosmo first complained to the hotel, but the noise pollution did not stop. This is not noise from a truck, as mentioned in the recent letter to the committee and hotel and residents from the hotel. After 10 p.m. until 3 a.m., when the glass cover on the roof is supposedly put in place, no acoustic measurements have been submitted or carried out as to the noise pollution that will affect all the surrounding area with club music until possibly 3 a.m. in the morning. The glass is not an acceptable acoustic shield and therefore noise from the club would still spill around the surrounding residential properties. Glass is not going to stop thumping bass, basically, and I'm an acoustic sound engineer. Again, I stress, this is not an empty field or a beach area, but an area where people live in and around the hotel. And as such, noise pollution should be kept to a bare minimum. And no music at any time in the day should be heard in any surrounding residential home, it has a, even if it has a tent event or not. We just shouldn't hear anything. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I employ the licensing 
uh, committee to reject the new proposed rooftop application completely on the grounds of the noise pollution of a club on the roof and the effect it will have on people's life that live around the surrounding areas. You know, I'd, I'd also like to stress to the committee that whatever is imposed or granted with this last license will set a new precedence for the whole of Hackney in that at present no open air clubs operate with live DJs all day and all night. This is unacceptable in a residential area and any decision made will have a lasting precedence for the whole of Hackney. Because if they do it there, you're going to get other hotels asking for open air roof terraces with club DJs all day and all night. You've got to set and lay down a law to stop it. It is just not fair. And basically, the 10 licenses are just unacceptable. We don't want to hear DJs all day and all night, all over the weekend. It's not fair on us. And, and this whole thing about saying after 10 o'clock, the glass will come down and it's a closed area. That how, do you, how do we know? The base will just go through the glass, the windows. We will still hear the noise through the, through the glass all day and then all night to 10 p.m. It's totally unacceptable. Um, you know, I, I'd also request that you, that you put on that on note that the represent that the non-representation from Hackney North Noise Pollution Department is really disappointing, considering the impact this new license application will have on the residents living around the hotel. You're going to get hundreds of complaints. There's brand new blocks of flats facing the hotel now, 32 stories, and basically you're going to be they're going to be inundated with complaints of base going through million pound flats can you imagine the amount of complaints they're going to get it's unbelievable and and there should be this noise limiter should be set for any event on the roof so that nobody anywhere should be able to hear anything in any part of the area okay thank, thank you, you for that rob you had your five minutes you had more thank than you. five minutes actually thank you very much <laughs> um okay uh now richard down to you to come in and kind of uh give your kind of reflective response and all the stuff that you've heard i believe that's what you wanted to try and do wasn't it well, well i do i mean I, I think my original objection uh, and that of my wife who co-owns the property with me um was on two bases so so bases rather what one was the licensing conditions which appeared to be different from those that exist currently it sounds as if the applicant is committed to those licensing conditions being the same but that is not the way the application appeared so the application as it stands as far as we're concerned should not be approved because that's not um, it doesn't appear to have exactly the same conditions as Keith very erudently set out in uh, in his objection at the beginning. So that was point number one. The, the second objection uh, we had was largely based on public nuisance, which uh, a lot of which was actually down to public nuisance at ground level, which uh, Andrew has made some very good comments about, uh, and so have Rob and Michelle, and that has been worse in recent years. And based on the use of the property and the potential change in use, I'll come back to what I mean by change of use, because I think to argue that the change of use isn't changing legally might be true, but it's quite clear that the way the property is going to be used uh, under either the hotel or nightclub designation is changing, which is disingenuous. And I think you've heard that from a number of the other objectors as well. Um, I think the the other comment about public nuisance, and I think we've heard this already, uh, is that there's been appears to have been little attempt by the operators of the uh, the current businesses and, and indeed um, the previous ones to actually provide any support to residents or staffing to help reduce that nuisance at ground level, which I think is going to be really important as well, particularly given what we think is going to happen in terms of the type of use, even if it's under the same nightclub designation that we're expecting to see in the property. So that is another reason uh, which I think needs to be addressed before any license could be approved. I actually think, given the excellent research that my neighbours have done on Blue Marlin and what they intend to be doing and, and what their reputation is, and basically they have the same model everywhere they go from what I, I can work out, so it's difficult to understand that they will do it differently here, that public nuisance point becomes much more important from the noise pollution element, and you just heard Rob talk very eruditely about that. And I think the fact that that hasn't been considered at all 
um, in a what appears to be a straight swap from one user to two users with the same conditions, it's disingenuous to think that that means that everything's the same because it very clearly isn't. And, and I would say, again, that's another reason to reject the license application because we do need a noise pollution assessment and noise abatement, I think, or whatever the right phrase is, Rob, um, to be done at the same time as well. Um, so I think that's another reason why it should be uh, not approved at this time. Um, I also think the, the whole topic of the operator and whether there's a legal change of use, um, it is very easy to interpret that as a bit of a smokescreen because of the uh, the Blue Marlin situation. And as others have said, much more erudite than I could, um, it, it doesn't seem to be very clear to us. It hasn't been obvious to us about the Blue Marlin thing from the way the application has been made. And I think that in and of itself suggests a lack of transparency together with the apparent not equivalent licensing conditions together with um, no analysis on noise pollution uh, or the public nuisance matter for me is a pretty strong case when you add all those things together that this application as it stands should be rejected so i'll stop there okay thank you very much for that richard um okay i'd like to invite members oh sorry Amanda, you can see your hand and i'd like members to ask some questions amanda Yes, Chair. Um, I don't know if it would assist you to clarify um, that although there, were, there is um, reference to noise nuisance, etc., um, did any of these, um, you know, these noise incidents get reported to the council, um, and was it a statutory nuisance? Yeah, Julie, you, you, you reported one, didn't you? Yeah, I reported it. It's in the materials. Um, it's referred to in my letter, and it was a report to noise pollution on the 29th of this, um, September. Yeah. What did they find? Um, they got back to me a week later and said, is the noise still continuing? I said, no. And that was it. Okay. Didn't hear anything else. All right. Thank you. I don't uh, think my, my job to kind of, you know, go no, around it. Can I just mention one thing? I know it's a bit cheeky, but um, there's been zero consultation with us. Okay. Now, I have know. been Thank in you. situations similar before where, you know, good operators consult with the local community. Zero consultation, so far as I'm aware, which is just typical, I think, of the attitude that um, this particular operator may um, have towards the community. Okay. Richard Dudley. Uh, just very briefly, I just wanted to ask Amanda what she meant by statutory nuisance, because you asked two questions, A, whether reports have been made, and B, whether it's defined to be a statutory nuisance. Could you just explain that for us, please? Yeah. Uh, a statutory nuisance is when the no noise level is at such a level that it is considered a statutory nuisance, where the um, environmental protection team can actually take action, um, maybe issue an abatement notice or something, because the le noise level is so much and um, so severe that it's um, causing, um, uh, it's classified as a statutory nuisance, but that can only be measured by the environmental protection team. It can't just be an individual. Mm -hmm. You can report it, but then they have to come out and witness it and confirm if they feel it's a statutory nuisance or not. Oh, just one thing, sorry. I did just, just- Remember, please. through the through the chair, please. Oh, sorry, chair. <laughs> um, a bit confusing procedure, sorry. Um, I did try and telephone County Council on the day um, it was a Friday afternoon. I couldn't get through to anybody. That's why I submitted it online. I would definitely have preferred to have spoken to someone to get them round to actually hear what was going on, but I, I was just out of options um, on that. Okay, day. thank you very much for that, Julie. Um, there's lots of people who want to speak now. Uh, we are moving into the discussion phase, um, but I would like to bring in members first um, to ask some questions and uh, just give their, put forward their, what their, thinking about this at the moment. So I'll take uh, Councillor Lufkin first. Councillor Lufkin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got three things that I would like to ask. Um, the first um, thing that I'd like to ask is of our licensing solicitor, um, Amanda. If we were to reject this application, would the um, operator be able to continue using their, their existing license? Yes, they, they, if they have an existing license, that will continue until they decide to reapply for a new application or they can continue with temporary events. 
Um, one of the questions I was going to ask the chair if he wanted clarification on is, <clears throat> well, I note that there seems to be a pattern that they're talking specifically about one application more than the other. And so I was wondering whether or not um, um, other persons could clarify if the issues are only with the proposed club and not with the hotel or whether or not the hotel is equally um, causing the same problems that the um, members club would cause. Okay, that's for the applicant, yeah? No. No, Chair, it was to the other persons, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's to the other persons because they they um, all consistently refer to noise nuisance coming from the um, the, the club members club area, uh, whereas the hotel. So I think we need to differentiate which parts of the building they're actually talking about that are causing the noise nuisance. Sorry, can I can I interrupt there, Amanda? Okay, I'm just going to read this out. This is condition 26. Okay. Sound limiting devices, device type to be approved by the council's environmental protection team, shall be installed to all music devices systems at the premises. All limiting devices should be set at a level to ensure inaudibility at the front elevations of all nearby residential premises. All limiting devices should be controlled by the premises license holder and kept in a locked, tamper proof box. Calibration certificates to be provided to the environmental protection team. Can I just check that that condition is going to be applied to both premises? If it, that the, the, the application in front of us has that condition applied to both premises, doesn't it? Yeah, that would do. So that would that should provide reassurance that there shouldn't be noise nuisance from the premises. If that condition is being broken, then other people, including the license as it currently is, because that is currently a condition on the existing license, if you feel that that is being broken, you need to raise that, okay? Um, so I, the, the third point I would like to make um, is about is the is the level of um, consultation with the residents. Actually, I mean because we've done we've been through these kind of things many times, and it does seem that the the, the level of consultation with the residents is pretty poor. You know, I don't I'm not reading about we've had a public meeting and. You know, all of these things were put to us to explain it. I would just like to ask the applicant, am I missing something? Have you done that? Um, because I'm quite used to seeing things like that. You know, on the minutes that we previously approved that I was at, the, the applicant had gone out of their way to discuss this with the local residents, but I'm not seeing that here. Am I missing that? No, Chair, not at all. The reason why there wasn't any consultation of that such is that we're not asking for anything new if this had been a new use um, particularly because of course this used to be in the special policy area of course we consult we saw it and we do see it as simply splitting it one license into two and apart from the well perhaps i'll deal with the rest of you in clo closing but but that was the reason simplicity why we didn't consult because it's 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 a just an exercise of splitting one license into two. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, but then you got loads of objections and you didn't seem to want to do something then. I mean, that's that's a bit disappointing, to be honest. We, we wrote to them, Chair. We wrote to everyone. I would have expected, bearing in mind that, you know, you've had all these, I would have expected you to kind of try and allay concerns at, a, you know, at a public meeting. Well, you we, know? Yeah, we did. We wrote to everyone and the only response we got back was from Keith. So we did respond uh, to everyone and if, if, if anyone else had responded, of course we would meet with them. We're more than happy to meet with them whenever they want to, but there was no other response to our correspondence. Okay, yeah. I mean, just on my thinking is that, you know, we do have a problem here because, you know, basically they can carry on using the current license, you know, so we can't impose different conditions. We can't, you know, if we continue, they'll just use the current license and reject it. So we are in a bit of a pickle, I think. Um, but yeah, perhaps I'll let other ca uh, my colleagues talk for a second. Yeah, I'd like to bring in Councillor Root now. I can see Michelle, Keith, and Andrew. I can see you on the screen. Don't worry, uh, Councillor Root. Thank you. Um, well, my issues are similar to Councillor Lufkin's, really. Um, I guess I'd quite like to hear from Mr. Lockhart. Is, is he surprised to hear about the concerns about the noise during the daytime from the roof? Um, 
And if he is, um, what is he going to do about it? And if he isn't, then um, that concerns me too. Well, so I suppose, you know, the question is, uh, particularly given that in your license that you've got already, um, that kind of disturbance is not supposed to happen. There's supposed to be noise limiters to make sure that that doesn't happen. What's your response to that? Um, and the other thing is, I think, you know, one of the things I'd quite like to see is um, is a bit of an effort to meet people and talk to them and have a, have some discussion with them. Um, and, you know, I'd like to propose that if we are minded to grant these two licenses, that we include a condition which says that, you know, on a maybe a six monthly basis, um, you invite residents to have a meeting to discuss any issues that they've got. And that way, you know, if there are staff who are smoking outside people's windows and such like problems, you can nip it in the bud before it builds up into a, into a big resentment. So yeah, I think it would be in your interest to do something yeah, like that too. We're, we're more than happy with that commitment and condition um, to, to meet on a biannual basis. Um, Chair, I, I'm going to hand over to David in just a second. But it wasn't quite was annual, it was six monthly, wasn't it? Six monthly, yeah, biannually, six monthly. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought biannually meant every two years. Uh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, six monthly is, is, is better. Um, Chair, just to be clear, and David will confirm this, he is not a stranger to having dialogue with residents. When issues have been raised before in terms of the air handling unit, the staff and customer smoking, he is engaged and he has dealt with them. Um, before I hand over to him, there's two issues in terms of the uh, complaints in September. David doesn't, I mean, obviously it's a while ago now and we haven't been informed of anything um, by the council. Uh, he doesn't remember it. But also the roof terrace is no longer his. It's now part of the second license. Just before you hear from David, I'm sorry, I know anticipation is probably building up. There are three conditions, which I hope will give some comfort, which you'll find at page 45 of the committee pack, which relate to the, um, the club and the rooftop. And it's conditions at page 45, it's conditions 21, 22 and 23. And it's condition 21 says no music to be played on the external areas of the rooftop terrace after 10 p.m. The glass rooftop of the terrace on the rooftop floor will be physically closed by 10 p.m. And there'll be no music on the rooftop area in respect of that part not covered by the glass enclosure between 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock. So I think that addresses the concern about there being music on the rooftop after 10 o'clock. David. Yes, but what about before 10 o'clock? <laughs> well, that, that's not the condition on the existing license. Can, David, can you, can you cast your mind back to September and as to whether you can think that it would have been anything that you're aware of? Could it have been another premises or...? No, I, I'm afraid actually I, I can't recall as to what that would have been um, happening on that day so a, a day event that was a, a takeover involving loud music that's certainly very very rare within the hotel and the rooftop we usually keep these things confined to the ballroom downstairs um but no i i i, I cannot answer can't remember, what can't that is yeah. okay sorry can, can i say something else Gilbert? just go yeah ahead. go on go ahead uh, no i was just going to say you know i mean given that um residents were moved to actually try and make a statutory noise complaint um there must have been something um and i'm sure they wouldn't have accused the uh, you know they wouldn't have accused you of making the noise if they weren't sure that it was coming from your establishment so you know clearly there was some noise during the day on that occasion i would just say to the residents that um it is obviously possible to have noise complaints during the daytime but i do know that the council's um noise department is not staffed so heavily during the daytime because obviously the most grievous complaints tend to happen at night and that's when they try to send people out. So it's not easy actually to get a statutory noise complaint um, during the daytime because it's not that easy to get an officer on site to actually evidence the fact that, that it's happening. Um, but I would urge you if any if that happens in the future 
to still stick with the online reporting system because it does go through just as quickly as telephoning. So I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere because you've not actually spoken to somebody, but it is worth actually doing it. Um, and I do think, you know, that, that the residents are entitled to um, a, a reasonable, comfortable life during the daytime. So I would like to hear a little bit more about what you plan to make sure that that, that doesn't happen during the daytime again. Well, Chair, we, we, we don't know that it did happen. Um, David, who was the GM? I don't think that's a very productive way forward, do you? I mean, we've just heard somebody saying that uh, it clearly did happen and that they were minded to actually report it to the council, they were so sure. that So to deny it happened is not a very fruitful thing to say. I, I didn't mean it to come across that way. I'm not saying we deny it happened. We just don't know what it was. Perhaps that's a better way of putting it. Councillor Root, have you had your questions answered or not? Um, well, I haven't. I still haven't had the. I mean, you don't know what caused it, but let's assume, we can make some assumptions about. You know, maybe there was um, uh, an all-day let of some sort that that was a sort of music-focused event. I mean, what would you do um, in future if you get that kind of a booking? It would be good to know so so that residents are assured about what would happen if that were to happen in the future. Well, well, obviously that would be directed at uh, Hugo, who's the. Um who's the operations director of the company that's now responsible for the rooftop. Um, I, I, think that, I think the short answer is, Chair, that because of our license conditions, we wouldn't want to do anything that constitutes a nuisance. Bear in mind the sound limiter condition, which requires that inaudibility at the, at the facade. Okay, let's bring in Keith. Right, I'm very interested that David said the rooftop is no longer his. That is my point. A hotel has a reputation. Now, the rooftop has been given to a totally different operator. Very, very different situation. He also said that noisy events would be confined to the ballroom downstairs. Again, a hotel operating in a responsible way. But this rooftop is now being operated by a different operator with a very different business plan. Now, I don't want to go on about smoking. I find that trivial because the real issue is about the noise at the rooftop. So trying to talk about complaints about smoking really is detracting from the main um, argument. Now, we met the gentleman, as I say, in 2015-16, uh, the ge American gentleman, he excellent. Uh, communication with us at the time. We took on board all our complaints in a way that I'm afraid these operators aren't. And he agreed that the um, sound and the rooftop restaurant would be a ambient background sound. Ambient background sound was the general agreement with this gentleman who ran the hotel. And that's what it tends to be. There have been occasional events that we've been talking about now. And the point about this occasional event, it shows the extent of the disturbance that one day can cause. Whereas generally, because the, uh, it's been a uh, restaurant operating in a proper way, it hasn't caused huge concerns to the same degree. But this is now, I go on about it, it's a barley nightclub a beach club it's their whole business model it's how they sell themselves and that is the point so all sound at all times on the rooftop no more than ambient background sound nobody complain about that thank you keith um michelle and rob yeah hi there um, I, I'd like to just to come back where, where the hotel was saying along the lines of, yes, it's fine after 10 p.m. because the glass comes down and everyone's inside. But as I mentioned in my objection, the glass, there's been no tests on the glass being acoustic barrier and acoustic screen. Just having a glass window is not going to stop the sound radiating out. So just saying, oh, it'll be fine after 10 because it's all inside the rooftop. It will still be blast out. If you've got a loud club DJ on a roof, it is going to go through glass. 
There's been no test, acoustic test or reports of how this would affect it. And I can basically, the only thing I would stress to the committee, of course, is to have the sound limiting uh, permanently on. But what we really need to have is they need to agree to have the sound limiting on any 10 license, which could be 15 summer weekends that the, t the 10 licenses need to have included into a condition that the sound limiting needs to be in included in this and wired into this so that no existing residential area shall hear the noise because that's the way it says the council should set it up and and i i can't stress enough to the committee and the chairman that we need this sound limited included not only just on any weekend of, up there but also on any the day. 10 any day and any 10 license that they apply for because if you've got peak tom on the roof which they're advertising in all their literature which is the big selling point he is not going to want to just say oh let's keep it down to a level here cover the whole of the shortage area <laughs> around there with sound and irrespective of whether it's all day or whether it's 10 p.m. at night where the glass comes down, which would dampen it down by 5, 10 dB in level, which is nothing. There, there needs to be, before you grant the license for a rooftop test, one, they need to have tests on the roof with the glass down to see what effect that has on the radiating of the sound. And two, you need tests during the day of what actual level of uh, these, these, the, the sound we're going to hear, and it needs to be the sound limiting devices need to be in permanently, irrespective of anything. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, uh, Councillor Luffin, can I see your hand. Can you wait a second so I can just bring in Andrew and Julie? No, can I can I yes. ask this now directly related to what? Um, okay, go on then. I'd just like to ask our legal officer. Um, if so, the condition twenty six, which I read out earlier about the. Um, sound limiter does that also apply to tens Amanda, are you there Ooh. chair I, I can deal with that if you if you take my word for it um the the sound limiter it depends how one frames one's temporary event notice application okay yeah can i just can i just clarify that with amanda if that's all right sorry could you repeat the question sorry i, I was interrupted at that time sorry i do apologize yeah. So we've got. You, 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 did you hear me read out the sound limiting device condition earlier? Yes, I did. Yes, yeah. Right. So the, the question from Rob was: Does that apply to periods when there's a ten? Um, well, basically, usually the existing license is part of the conditions which would be expected. The premises would ex be expected to comply with, and so, so the ten is just the extension on the license, the hours. Or okay, so the. So, I mean, my point to you, Rob, would be if you think there's a sound problem here, okay, the sound monitoring device does operate 24 hours a day. It's not, if you've got a problem with that, you, you need to raise it, okay? If you've got, if you think they're in breach of that, you know, it, it says, yes, all limiting, um, so. Yeah, I, thank you, yeah, thank you, thank you, Jeff. Just let me finish. Inaudibility at the front elevations of all re nearby residential premises. Now, I think what you're saying is that's not happening. You've got to report it. Is yeah. That, is that okay? and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, Chair. Um, uh, basically, the, the, the problem we have with here is we asked your licensing officer uh, if the um, sound limiting is carried across onto the tens. And we had an email back a couple of days ago saying, no, it isn't unless it's specifically written in. So, so effectively, I don't think unless it's written into a condition, uh it cannot it doesn't have to be carried across onto the 10 licenses yes. and and we did receive an email from your licensing department to say that it will not be carried across and and that's the big pro problem and we haven't had any much reason apart from that time uh where we had the thumping music from the fashion show on the roof that's which we can was. remind it was a fashion show on your roof terrace um effectively um, we haven't had much problems because it's been a restaurant uh, with pipes, low pipe music on the roof. And we've been up there because the previous owner actually really engaged with us and took us up there and showed us. And, and it was fantastic. It was fine. But this is a totally different ball game. And, and effectively, 
Uh, yes, the sound limiting really needs to be wired in and tested by the council to make sure that it's not heard on any. That's what the condition says. The condition yeah, says that. But, but if that changes, report it. Okay. Yep. You know, but 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 your earlier point is one that I'm really concerned about is that we seem to have a contradiction about yes. what yes. what your what your what the officers have got and what. Yes. 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 We're just looking for the email now. But, yeah. Yeah. We, we specifically asked if a, for a tens would the um would yep. it carry across, and we said no, no, it, no. it wouldn't be carried across. Yeah. Only can, if it was. Can, can actually, I help? Right. Okay. Okay. Just just on that on that point, I just want to bring our lawyer back in again, Amanda. Yeah, sorry. On, on, I do apologise then if I've mis um, answered that question incorrectly. Cause, um, my understanding was is that when you have a ten, the um, existing licence is that the expectation is is that you would still comply with it. But if they have actually specifically told you that, then I, I'm sorry. I apologise if I've said anything incorrectly. Um, Chair, what my question really was is that I'm just conscious um, that I know you're going around to everybody, making sure everyone has their contribution. But I think that because time is getting on that we need to be clear as to whether or not um, there are any issues with the hotel part of the application, because we're hearing both applications together. So we need to be clear as to which part of the building they're saying there's an issue with. Uh, do they do lo um, local residents have issues with both applications or just one of them? So is it the hotel? It's the roof mania, I think, isn't it, yeah. folks? So yeah, what that's, we need to clarify, we, we don't want to sort of say that the hotel part of the that application item seven i think that is um basically but we just need to get clarification on that from everyone so if you could just um incorporate that into your point yeah, but you. i think julie's got a problem with the basement as well is that right julie you're on mute. sorry yeah yeah just a couple of things i've got a problem with the basement it's now a nightclub it was never a nightclub before december 2023 i don't like my kid having to walk past a nightclub um all the you know anti-social stuff that can go on around that kind of stuff aside from the music i'm not too happy with the nightclub yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the volume like uh, there what's the volume like coming out of the basement i haven't heard any at the moment it's not the noise it's just the mess the um the smoking the loud noise bouncers red lights um you know, mess, mess, general, and you know, drug, drug dealing, hackney. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, the other thing is, can I just say, like, you we're talking about all these licenses conditions. They were definitely broken on that day in in September. We cannot trust these people. They haven't consulted with us. They broke, definitely broke the license conditions on that day. And the suggestion that I may have not been telling the truth um i really take um objection to i myself am a solicitor i would never submit a complaint that without justification and can we please appreciate the license all conditions were broken on that day that is is, is what we're dealing with here okay thank you very much for that julie uh got keith uh, just regarding the um hotel as far as i know that's okay I just said that about waste collection, there's originally mm -hmm. a condition about waste collection is where the premises license holders waste carrier cannot or does not collect the refuse between the allocated time band agreed with the premises, the license, uh, the license holder uh, will return the refuse to the sub-level basement uh, to be collected at another time. This co uh, condition was put in simply so that um, refuse wouldn't build up in the street in the event of, for example, uh, a strike by refuse collectors. But uh, this is all being confused because we're talking about two licenses. But uh, that's just an objection or uh, uh, regard the hotel and okay so mr thomas uh, applicant um you need to look at that page 84 as to whether you might accept the additional wording at the bottom of that condition page 84 in my pack um it's just before appendix b6 
under under the title Objection 3. Just have a quick look at that. Uh, Michelle, you want to show us something on your phone? Sorry, just quickly. Um, uh, the email from uh, Scenario Hussain, uh, the conditions stated would not automatically apply whilst A10 is in place. However, we expect the Environmental Protection Authority would have concerns and we all scrutinise carefully. So um, that's regarding the 10 uh, that uh, it doesn't transfer automatically across for sure. Yeah. OK, Thank so I would like to ask a couple of questions unless members have got some questions, other questions they would like to ask. Um, I'm just waiting to see. OK, happy for me to go ahead. Yeah, just nod or whatever. Yeah, brilliant. OK, so what's, what, what's happening now? Just We just need to know exactly what's happening at the moment because as Councillor Lufkin said, um, you know, if we reject this license, you can operate anyway because you've still got the license, any, you know, this current license anyway. It's also not clear, really clear to me as to why you want to, really. The idea of having easier enforcement, I, I'm not sure if I buy that, to be honest with you. So I'm slightly confused around that particular point. I'm not sure if you can clarify that one. Um, and then, and also what, you know, what happens now? What happens on the roof now? Is the glass area is that a separate area because um rob's suggesting you can you can take the roof off and put it on somewhere else or whatever are the two separate which is outdoors one which is roofed one which you can roof if you want to whenever you want to i just want to understand what's going on there i also want to propose because the roof is the, the essential issue here in your submission in the application form you mentioned the rooftop restaurant in application one um sorry agenda item six rather um okay. in the second one it's yeah. a restaurant rooms restaurant cafe bar hotel and bedrooms um i'm going to stop there because i've got other questions i want to ask about the floors as well which i will go into later so uh, mr thomas i don't know if you've got some of those i, I did can repeat. I, I did chair thank you God. my memory will only allow me to answered a couple of questions at a time can i deal with the issue of the um the use of the rooftop first there's a yeah, just tell us what happens right now what, what yes, are you yes, doing I now will, under will. the current license it, it's a condition under the current license which goes on the new license for the rooftop that after 6 p.m alcohol should not be sold for consumption um on the rooftop other than to persons taking a substantial meal for the menu and supplied by way to wait for service yeah can you stop there one second would you, as we're on this one, um, which is condition 20 on page 21, it may be different in the other at the end of it because there's two sets of conditions basically. Um, would you be happy to add the word substantial table meal in there rather than substantial meal? Can I that's, just, that's, what we, can that's what we do generally is add the word table. Can I just take instructions a sec? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, the only reason why I suspect it was framed like that in the first place is that we might have canopy receptions where something is a meal, but you wouldn't call it a table meal because it's not served at a table. So whilst I appreciate that would be the normal wording, you know, the, um, we would like to do that type of function when you're served with small bites or, or even larger bites, but not necessarily at a table. So I hence... That's why I think. So, that's so is that is that a no to that question? Because I think it would really help you if it was a yes. But if there's a no, I'll put no. It, it's a respect. Um, I can just leave you. I can leave you to. I can leave you to think about it a bit longer if you want. Um, while we just continue with this uh, line of questioning, um, I'm also of minded to suggest the idea of core hours up there as well, just in general. Um, just talk to me about what happens on the roof, please. I, I need to know what goes on up there at the moment. Is it a restaurant? Is, it, is it a yeah. swimming pool? What is it? What what actually happens up there? It, it, Chair, it, it's governed. I think the key to unlocking this is that it's governed by the license conditions. No, I just want to know, uh, Mr. Thomas, what happens up there? That's all. I just want you to tell me what happens. 
Well, I'm going to bring in Hugo, who's the operations uh, director. There is a swimming pool up there, but we operate, particularly after 6 p.m., as a restaurant where alcohol can only be sold with food. Okay. Can you, um, can you expand on that anymore? Uh, Do you want to? Correct, basically. This is a. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, correct. This is just a restaurant, basically. So we are not uh, doing any uh, parties. Uh, we're not calling uh, international DJs at the moment. It's, uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be used as a restaurant. So, right. so are, you, you, are you happy for it to be used as a restaurant then? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what the condition says. We're doing a breakfast. So, therefore, you should be happy to have substantial table meal then, shouldn't you? Well, because yeah, people normally eat at a table. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. The reason why we would want to keep the flexibility that's in the current license is to allow for canopy type events that that aren't at a table. Yeah, but you, but yeah, I'm I'm not sure I buy that one really because it's a restaurant. Um, that's what you said. That's you've just told me it's a restaurant. Yeah, but, and but in a restaurant you sit down at tables and eat your food. That's the way restaurants work. Sure, I, I appreciate that, but sometimes restaurants have canopy type events as well. Well, you, you want to run it as a restaurant. That's what you've told me. So that's 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 what I'm hearing. Um, so you're just operating it as a restaurant then, with with background music, and Chair, that's what you want. That's what you want to carry on doing. Chair, that's what I'm hearing. That's what you've just told me. Chair, I, I haven't even I haven't even mentioned music. Um, there are conditions on the license. Can I just make one one thing absolutely clear? And, and sorry, if it's been a long day, Chair. So please don't think that I'm being um, uh, obstruct obstructive. I've, this is my second hearing today. The there are conditions on the existing license which deal with whether we can have music. All music is deregulated in the live music app before until 11, 11 yeah. But in any event, so any conditions that, let's say you said had the condition saying had to be background music. A, there's a question of what background music is, but B, it would be an unfor unenforceable condition anyway. Because oh, like, 11, yeah. Like music up to 11. And we don't have music um, after um, condition, it's condition 45. Let me just look at it. Da -da -da. Bear with me. It's page 45. Yeah, I'm looking at agenda item seven conditions because um, that seems to be, they seem to be a bit more complete to me. What page number are you on, Chair? 185. Let me just scroll down. 184, 185. And it goes up to condition 39, which is the last one for the sound limiting device. Whereas on agenda item six, it was, it was, it was um, condition number 26. I mean, it, it does, it just, all this is very discombobulating for everyone. And this is why we're spending a lot of time on this because it's very confusing. Um, Chair, Chair, can, can I just make one thing clear? I was going to deal with it in closing, but I'll deal with it now. There, there's been a lot said about what people think we're going to do and how we're going to operate. We've actually been operating under the existing license since December, mm -hmm. and we haven't caused a peep. So it's all very well saying, oh, they might operate like that. Well, you know, they might operate like that in Ibiza or something like that. But since December, they haven't caused a, a peep to anyone under the existing license conditions. Yeah, but it's clear to me um, that, that that you are quite resistant to just be operating the rooftop as a restaurant. <laughs> well, no, that, I, haven't, no, I haven't said that, Chair. The existing license conditions say that after 6 p.m. alcohol has to be with substantial food. The only point, um, let's call it resistance, I was making is that if you- Well, your colleague <laughs> said it was a restaurant and I asked him plainly, this is on public record, by the way, it's being recorded. Are you happy with it being a restaurant still? And he said yes. Chair, it, it, it is a restaurant. What we're saying is restaurants sometimes have canopy events. And if you put a condition that said it had to be a table meal, we wouldn't be able to have the canopy events. And we'd have to apply for a temporary event notice. And then we're back into this quagmire of what conditions would, would apply to it. Yeah, well... I mean, a table meal in a restaurant seems a perfectly acceptable condition from my point of view. But if you want to say no, that's up to you. Um, I'm going to put no on there unless you change your mind. Um, OK, so what else did I want to ask about? Oh, yeah, just the, the, this glass structure, um, non-glass structure on the roof. How does that work? Can you just help, help me visualize how that? 
we're just plugging in our laptops so bear with us you go can you can you describe the glass structure on the roof and how it can works you just describe how how you operate it what does it what's its function uh, can you do uh, I, 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 this isn't yeah. david's bit anymore but yeah. he's, he's better used to it than you guys perhaps uh yes so the the glass is a permanent fixture it is essentially a retractable roof okay so the condition is that you can open it to enjoy an outside dining experience whenever you the weather is working but it must be closed by 10. it is so does, it have, does it have sides this thing sorry does it have sides yes yes absolutely it's it's a complete case walls rooftop walls that retract it on itself right okay so we can kind of generate so the, the glass must be fairly thin then i, I suspect if you're going to be moving it right because it's got to be quite light otherwise it'd be difficult right it must be must be quite thin glass yeah uh, i i couldn't comment on the thickness of the glass but the whole okay thing, um, michelle and rob you've been up there how thick is the glass uh, yeah, we've been up there. It's, it's not very thick. It's obviously it's operated by electric motors, so it can't be too heavy because of the, the, the motors that need to move the glass. But it's not a soundproof uh, glass area. It's just like a, a window that comes, you know, that moves down like a, like a garage. Effectively. Okay. Uh, yeah, yep, thank you. Can, can, can I just uh, d d just add quickly that the thing about that they've been operating since December? Well, actually, all this is about the summer the spring and the summer just because they've been operating since uh, uh, december it, it, this new club they probably haven't had any events in december uh, and, and now it's, it's freezing cold out we're, yeah. we're concerned about going forward summer going moving forward thank you chair yeah uh keith do you want to come in on some of some of the stuff you've heard there um we've been talking about the noise and being able to make um, complaints to uh, noise uh, pollution, but that's rather shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted. We're really looking towards the committee to uh, ensure that we don't need to complain, and we're looking towards the operator to ensure that they respect our presence in the area and that we have no need to complain. As I said, the American gentleman, I forget his name, he was the chief executive of Governance Ford Limited, he communicated with us and he accepted that the rooftop should just have ambient sound, background no uh, music. Yep. This is the responsible hotelier, and I'd like to see them doing exactly the same, and that was all through the day, not just at night. Okay. My last point, if you don't mind, folks, and I know time's pressing. I'm, I, I really thank you for your patience, um, but we just need to get to the bottom of this, really. Um, so there's, there's, although we're looking at this as one, there's the hotel, there's the kind of the roof and the nightclub and stuff like that. It has complicated matters, uh, Mr. Thomas. I have to say, um, I, I really don't understand why you couldn't have just gone for one license. But anyway, um, there, there's sort of two kind of things on the table there, as we know. The first one talks about level three, level two, and ground, and the rooftop. The second one talks about ground, it talks about one and two, and it talks about first to fifth. So it's, you're, you're, you know, it's all, all included in, in there already. I don't know why you've, it's just a mystery to me as to why you need two, really. I, you know, you're, you're, you're already, you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's just, you're covering all those levels already unless there's various compartments within the building, in which case the only test for this really would for, for, for committee members, and this is, would be quite unconventional, would be to go and actually have a walk around the building to see exactly what you're talking about and to look at stuff and work it out. Because at the moment, everyone's slightly discombobulated with this. That's the truth of the matter. Um, so I don't know if you want to come back on that. Chair. I don't know if it sort of got lost in translation during the hearing, but the parts of the premises that are operated by Ennismore are now going to be under the the, the Ennismore license, and the parts of the premises operated by Blue Marlin are going to be under under the other license. 
the reason why we want to split the one license in two but keep the same conditions so if there are any conditions which need to go on which were on the old which were on the existing license that pertain to the roof terrace they should obviously go across i'm sure amanda will go through those and if there's any that we missed that should be on the roof terrace because they're on the existing license relating to the roof terrace of course they should go on there we're, we're simply asking for exactly the same thing but just split into it i i i see a picture it, it's it's a bit like solomon's baby isn't it but uh, which is something we don't want to do because we could continue trading under the existing license that's how we have been trading we the reason you asked the reason why we want to have two licenses and that's simply because we would prefer to have our own if we're responsible if anything's more responsible for this, this bit they would like to own it if you like with their own dps and blue marlin are responsible for their bit so they have their own dps and they own it that, that's simply the reason but i mean the only distinction the major distinction is the hotel bedrooms really uh, that i can see on both of these applications agenda item seven it mentions hotel bedrooms agenda item six it doesn't but that's, um, on the, that's on the end is more part yeah so that would that obviously that would have to be brought into the uh yeah. into the picture okay i've got amanda and then councillor root chair just to ask for clarification uh, does this mean um depending on the outcome of the of the applications is the uh, existing license going to be surrendered or is that are they going to be maintaining that well i think there are two issues uh, arising for that but firstly is Obviously, it depends on what we get granted. If 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 the licenses that are granted are different from the existing license, then the answer would probably be no, with the greatest of respect, and I, and I mean that. Um, secondly, we were hoping the landlord was hoping to retain the the license that's currently in force as a shadow license, so they then have some responsibility themselves to promote the licensing objectives because they are a license holder themselves for the original license. So. For, so for those two reasons, that wasn't necessarily the, the intention, but it's more of an issue of what we get out of it than, than, the, uh, than the second issue of uh, preferring the original one to be a, a shadow license. But, yes. but certainly, Chair, just to be completely frank and candid with you, um, we can and have been trading under the um, existing license. And, and obviously, if, if things are materially change from that then i don't think there'd be much appetite to surrender the existing license well no it's a good question thank you for that amanda um keith i can see you but i would just like to bring in councillor root first we're heading towards the end of this by the way folks so we'll get there eventually um councillor root excuse me yeah i th um, possibly my question's just been answered by by um the last answer there uh, i was being i suppose hyper suspicious in thinking that one possible reason for wanting to split this license in two is because if the club license were to be challenged at all because they break their conditions, it wouldn't necessarily mm. impact on Ennismore's license for the hotel. Um, that's one thing I was thinking. The other thing I was thinking mm. was that if the club gets a license for the hours it has at the moment, um, it makes it much easier for the club to apply separately to have a variation on that license and try and extend its hours. So I wondered if there's any suggestion that that might happen in the future. Um, as far as I know, nothing has been mentioned to me about changing uh, the hours. I don't think it would be any easier to apply for variation if it was two licenses rather than one. I think your, your foot, the, the first point you made um, if I can say through the chair, it is well made. Um, that wasn't a reason for submitting the application. Well, your first point was if there are problems with the um, with the rooftop operated by Blue Marlin, would Ennis more prefer to to not have any part of that? Well, I, I'm sure the answer from their point of view would be yes. I think the benefit of it being two licenses, it would possibly be easier to review the. A separate license and if they were all held together i can see that being a benefit of holding two licenses okay i've got um andrew and julie you just had your hand up there for a minute you're okay uh, yeah. you, go. Yeah, you want to speak go on ahead i'll just allied to the last point um maybe also they kind of if they get this new license 
when they apply for what I assume will be retrospective planning permission, because I reckon that the change of use is very relevant here. They can then go to the planning authorities and say, "Oh, look, we've got a license. We've got a, you know, a license from the licensing committee." Might help their case there. As I said, I'll, I'll be exploring that with um, Hackney Planning and Planning Enforcement. Yeah, I think okay. if there's any, just back to the point that, uh, that you made about, or sorry, with the councillor out made about, are they going to potentially apply for a, 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 another license at a later date? Saying I don't know doesn't really kind of doesn't have any value if you say no we definitely won't for five or 50 years then we're listening but we know because we've been around the houses on this before they always do every single time whether, whether it was one license or two licenses it's not about that it's about what do you look you know we, we, we're around in circles what are you going to do in the future you're going to try and do more in the future they always do I, I don't know. I, and, and the, the well, you should do. That's what you're on. You're supposed to be representing. You know, you, you well, should I, know. I am. I've okay, got, through the chair, please you remember. Stop interrupting me, please. I haven't got a crystal ball. They haven't got a crystal ball. So a different general manager in two years' time might want to change something. I can't. I can't handcuff my clients by saying we're never going to do something because even if I could, that would be an unlawful condition. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Keith. My point was exactly the same as Councillor Rhodes. I thought I was being cynical, but uh, she picked up the same point. It sounded to me as though Ellismore was a bit worried about the club and, they, and that any action against the club's licence would affect their own then. Um, I'm afraid Councillor Rhodes and I are in total agreement with our suspicions there. Great. Okay, folks. Um, I think we've really talked a lot about this. Um, I think members and myself got a clear understanding of what the issues here are. Um, I just want to go back and give you one more chance about adding the word table. If it's still no, it's still no. Have you decided what you want to do? That's condition uh, 20. I can't hear you, Mr. Thomas. You're on mute. I'm on mute. I'm just taking instructions, Chair. It's quite important. If you want to run I'm a restaurant... Sure that, that's why I'm taking instructions, Chair. Thank you. It's important. Yeah, to now, while you're waiting for that answer, can I ask uh, uh, my question again, which I, I'm not sure whether you have enough information to make a decision, that um, we need to be clear about the difference between applica um, application item 6 and item 7. Um, so I want you to be um, happy or sure that you all have enough information to make the decision because they are seem, they seem to be treated differently. Um, so I just want to make sure that you've got enough information from everybody about them so that you can make a decision. Thank you. There is a nightclub there, Julie, at the moment, isn't there? How long? How long? How long has that been operating the night that nightclub? Well, it's a called a members club. On the outside, it says Blue Marlin Ibiza Private Members Club, and it's got this picture of Pete Tong, who I think is a. No, I've, I've seen the picture, but how long has it been that been operating as a nightclub? As uh, uh, so far as I'm aware, I don't know. I haven't been inside. Those pictures came up in December 2023. Yeah, Mr. Thomas, can you can you ask, answer that question? How long has it been running as a nightclub? We, we Blue Marlin have been running their part since 2023, December. Okay. Uh, Chair, I, I, I'm sorry, and I, I genuinely, we are not trying to be obstructive, but the um, that's a question that we'd have to ask the ultimate owner um, to, to agree, and he's not here, and I haven't got his agreement, so I can't... Okay, well, we'll just put that down as a no, then, for the time being, because that's all we've got, so we'll, we'll just do that. That's great. Thank you for that. Okay, so... Um, I would like to go to closing remarks now. Um, so I would like to invite, uh, first of all, Keith, just for a minute or so, just your closing remarks, please, Keith. Uh, basically, as I've said before, we're turning to the committee to protect us from the noise disturbance from the uh, use of the uh, Paris, the uh, previous owner, agreed to ambient sound at uh, so you could hold a conversation 
He agreed to that at all times. We'd appreciate that to be installed again. Yeah. You can have a think about that one, Mr. Thomas, as well. Um, Michelle and Rob, do you want to come back? Yes, just first closing, really. I mean, it, it's it's uh, quite obviously it's a very different um, type of idea they've got over there and why it wouldn't sort of tie time down to tables on there it's quite obvious that i've said all along that it's this canapes so you just buy a bit a little bit of food but it's a club on there uh but i implore as i said the committee to include the tens into the conditions of noise limiting uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, that is a, the most important thing uh, because then any time we hear any noise the license will be broken and and then we can effectively be on to licensing all the time that we, we are hearing noise noise pollution, noise pollution. so yeah. thank you very much for listening to me it's really appreciate thank you very much and uh andrew and rob sorry andrew and julie sorry <laughs> yeah, look, uh, yeah we, we've said so the same thing to our kind of um, objection um we don't believe the uh, intent that's been described by the applicants. We know they will take a view um, or, or an approach to change this in the future. It will, this has been advertised as a nightclub. It's an advertised, we've got a, a late opening, we've got a license, they want a, it's going to be noise, it's going to be terrible, it's going to be awful for us that live around here and they shouldn't be allowed. If, can I just add that I think there's been deliberate obfuscation. Yeah, I agree. Even today, they can't tell us what the facts are because they haven't even brought the relevant personnel from Blue Marlin or whoever it is they say they need to talk to. Um, so, um, yeah, I just think they're trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. It's not working. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And then finally, Ms. Uh, Richard Dudley. Yeah, so just my point was going to be really where Julie finished there, which is a lack of transparency. So I think there's been a lack of transparency initially when we looked at the licensing conditions, which didn't appear to be the same, even though they're now saying they're happy to accept them to be the same. There seems to be a lack of transparency on the Blue Marlin issue uh, and the whether it's a legally defined change of use is not the point. Uh, it's the change in the way the property will be used. And there seems to be a lack of transparency on why to split the license in the first place. And we've heard a few theories as to why that might be the case in this meeting. So for me, there's a total lack of transparency here, which means uh, if, if I was on the committee, I wouldn't be uh, approving this licensing condition. And we don't believe you as a committee should do that either. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Lufkin, you've got your hand up. Oh, yeah, um, I just need to clarify tens. First of all, I just need to ask our legal officer. Um, yeah, you're breaking up there for me. I don't know if any, anybody else can hear, uh, Mr. Councillor Lufkin. You'll come back. Okay. Yeah, try again, Councillor Lufkin, because we lost you there for a minute. I think we need to let him come out. Uh, he might have to come um, re, um, leave the meeting and re -come, uh, come back again. Mario, yep. could you assist at all? Let's just try and wait for Councillor Lufkin for a second. Sure. Just everyone uh, take so a deep breath. Just make a quick observation. I do apologise for saying it again, but I do need clear, uh, because we've decided to deal with both applications together, I do need the other persons to say, because it's clear what their view is, I think, on application six, but we need to know what is their uh, position on application seven. So we do need a clear, def defined thing, so that it's very clear what the evidence was or considerations were for that. My, my impression is that the roof is the main concern, although Julie had concern about the, the, the nightclub, but that's application one. Um, so I think application two is generally, I, I'm assuming, is generally okay with everybody. But I think we need to hear that because I haven't heard that from anybody. That's the thing. That's my concern. Yeah, so it's kind of the hotel versus the nightclub and roof, really, kind of thing. Um, don't know if anyone wants to come back on that and just say, say what you think. So to, it's uh, Richard Dudley here. So I think, you know, on the face of it, um, happy to be contradicted by my neighbours, but I don't think we do have an issue with the hotel license application. But the issue related to that is the motivation for splitting them in the first place and what consequences that may lead to. So for, for me, uh, for my own part, 
uh, I would rather that both these licenses were rejected until we've reached the bottom of that challenge. So that is the and that that I can reach that conclusion during this meeting as opposed to in advance. But given the discussion we've had, I would be nervous about accepting one and not the other, particularly as the existing license still remains in force. Yeah, um, and uh, could be used in basically the same way of we, we've all expressed our concerns about tonight. So you know, uh, as Councillor Lufkin said earlier on today. There's a bit of, bit of a pickle here in this licensing situation, so I think it needs to be reevaluated. Full stop. Yeah. Okay. I, I noted that Julie nodded her head to that. Michelle and Rob, I didn't see you shaking your head to that, so assuming you're okay with that. And Keith, um, I didn't see any reaction really. But uh, can no, you? I, I, my objections are, as I say, uh, solely about the uh, the, the uh, roof. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, Councillor Lufkin, just bring you in. Remember, we do have points of final clarification at step eight, which is after closing remarks. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, I, just to let people know, I've been asked by the um, uh, technical officer to just keep my uh, my, my camera off because that might be affecting the connection. Yeah. Um, so my question was, I don't know how much of it you heard, um, Amanda. Not very much. No, none of it. So okay, well, it was, uh, Rob had raised the question of tens. He said, can, my question to you was, can we impose the same conditions, the same noise conditions on tens as part of this license that apply to the existing? I, the, I'd, have to, I'd have to take, I'd have to speak to the licensing authority about that because I don't, we've never done that before. Um, so I'm not saying, you know, I don't, also given the uh, response that came back from licensing when I incorrectly answered earlier, because um, my understanding is that temporary events are also based on the existing use, how you operate your license already. They look at that as, as a supporting factor for whether or not you can qualify for getting a 10 um, and, and, and how you um, operate your license. So because um, the licensing officer came back saying that it doesn't automatically get transferred, I can't give that commitment that it would be automatically transferred. It would be on a case by case basis and subject to what the police or whoever is considering the application and also the environmental protection team at the time. Chair, Chair can, can, I, can I help? I think I, I've got the answer of unlocking this if it's of assistance in relation to the temporary event notices. We're not, of course, considering an application for a temporary event notice and you can't put a condition on the license which would restrict or deal with how you apply for a temporary event notice because they're two completely separate processes. That sounds bad. Can I temper that by saying this? Yeah, go on. I mean, I'm just building up to it, Chair. Bear with me. When one applies for a temporary event notice, you can apply to change the hours, you can add activities, you can apply to leave out conditions if, for example, you know you want to change something. So say, for example, we applied for a temporary event notice and we didn't include the sound limiter condition on it, then the environmental health officer would or could or, or would object to that. So what operators do, if, for example, they're just extending the hours, they repeat all the conditions on the license. The environmental health officer will look at it and say, that's fine, it's just an extra hour, we've still got the sound limited condition on there. So it's not something that you can deal with under this regime, but if we made a temporary event notice application without repeating, for example, the sound limited condition, then that's something that environmental health no doubt would jump on. I hope that helps. Yeah. Well, that, that, that clarifies things. We just have to make sure that uh, they would they, they get round to doing that. Um, so, uh, Mr. Thomas, it's your opportunity for closing remarks. And I would just like to ask you on the waste condition, would you be happy to add in that extra sentence about putting it away in the basement again or wherever, whatever it said there? Yeah. Um, Ambient levels, um, as suggested by Keith, a condition around ambient levels of sound on the roof. And also, I'm giving you a final opportunity uh, on the word table. And I know you say you, you can't make a decision, but it's quite critical, this one, I feel. Um, just giving you an opportunity to think about that again. Um, so that's it. So chance for closing remarks for you and, and just uh, answering some of those yeah, questions you. there. Page 84. Um Hopefully, we'll never have a, a refuse strike again. I don't think there's been one for a while. I don't think that condition or the amendment to the condition um, makes it any 
would, would improve the situation. It's only in the event of a, a refuse strike, and hopefully that's not going to happen. Um, it's the same answer to... So that's a no, then, yeah, to that one? That That's a no. Yeah, okay. What we would like is simply the, the same conditions applied from the existing license split across the two parts. Um, to deal with the proposal that we have a condition that it's only background or, or ambient noise and the table meal, it, it's the same answer. We, we, we're we just asking for the same conditions on, on the same license. I'll come back to the reason why. There's an additional reason why we wouldn't agree an ambient noise condition, simply because it's unenforceable as to what background or ambient noise level means, and it's unenforceable under the Live Music Act. Jeff, well, up, up, to, up to 11, yeah. Up to 11. Well, we don't have music on the roof after 11. Jeff, this all comes down to the sound limiter. We, we've got a sound limiter condition on both licenses, and that limiter condition says that the music has to be inaudible um, uh, as per the condition. There has only been one complaint. I don't doubt that that complaint was made, uh, by the way, if, if it helps. I'm just saying we, we don't know about it. And we never, nobody wrote to us from the council. Um, but the fact that there, that there was only one complaint in September it's quite clear evidence that a lot of these concerns might hopefully be be unfounded. You know, you've heard a lot of what this will be and what will be that. Well, if, if you made a decision based upon, you know, um, what, what's what's the rhyme, what's good for it's pot, the pots and pans ones, there'll be no work for um, somebody's hands or, or something like that. But you can't base your decision on what might happen just because in Ibiza we've got um, um, a beach club. We, there's a condition on the license that says that after 11, like after 6 p.m., alcohol must only, must only be with a substantial meal. I appreciate we're um, yeah, but canopies aren't a substantial meal, are they? Well, they can. Well, they can, they can be, chair. Well, if they're not, then we're in breach of that. That's my point, and has yeah. to be supplied by waiter waiter service. I've been asked to make it very clear. Um, that this is not, that is not a club. You know, I, I appreciate there's a lot of concern that it might look like a club and it might sound like a club, not sound like a club, but 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 from what they've seen on social media. But all we're asking for is the same conditions, and I, and I can't put it any more directly than that. There, there's just yeah, but no condition way. 36, Mr. Thomas, in regards to the music. You know, you said it stops at 10 or whatever, but. That's only in, 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 in that part not covered by the glass enclosure. So you're going to move into the glass enclosure and go on till 12. But the glass enclosure, as uh, Rob has suggested, being an acoustician, um, he doesn't feel that'd be appropriate. Well, um, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really protect the sound uh, Ken, travel at all. The, if this was a new application from scratch, I, I might agree with him. But we've got, this, we've got the limiter condition, and the limit is obviously working because nobody's heard a, a peep apart from that incident in September. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you finished now, Mr. Thomas? Do you want a bit more time? No, to... I think I'm, I'm finished, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, Michelle, Jeff, you could I just add, it hasn't been a club up to now on the roof. So he's saying it's been fine up to now, but the, but the whole thing changes. So he, he keeps saying, oh, it's been fine up to now. It, but has, it has been, been fine. fine. It has been but fine. That's it's the like whole going, point. Going forwards. forwards. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Look, thank you very much, everyone. You've been really patient, and thank you to members. You've all been really patient, and I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you feel that you've had a fair hearing, everyone, um, on this one. Um, and I would just like to say that uh, there being no more business, there's no more, there's no tens on this license uh, or this this meeting. I don't think. Let me have a quick look. Uh, no, that's good. Yep. So. Uh, there being no further business for consideration, uh, the meeting has now come to an end. So thank you very much, everyone. We will go off and deliberate this um, with all the, the information and um, discombobulation that exists yeah. around this one. Thank you very much. I'd like to say, yeah. Ken, yeah. thank you. Will you be coming back this evening? Do you want us thank to you very much. Chair, will you be coming back this evening? Do you want us to uh, wait for the results or will it be... No, no, that's fine. Um, you'll get a skeleton no, I, I, tomorrow morning. I, I, Depending, I will contact you if the decision is available tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.
Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.